The truth is that all kids are born with an innate curiosity. As parents, teachers, and homeschooling moms, we want to nurture this curiosity that our children have about the world around them. And through this curiosity, we want them to develop inquiry skills such as experimenting, exploring, and making every effort to understand how their world works. This is exactly how a scientist acts and thinks. Welcome to Ruth Straight Talk, the channel designed to help you, your students, and your children live fuller lives, become lifelong learners, and grow into the awesome human beings you were designed to be. I'm Cynthia Ruth. In this video, I will share with you how to help your child become a scientist. So if this video is for you, let's get right to it. When your child learns how to observe, ask questions, brainstorm, explore cause and effect, make predictions and test their findings on several scenarios, they will have become a scientist. So here are some steps. Number one, observation. Observation is a bedrock skill for scientists. It's the art of paying attention and noticing little details. Kids of all ages can build on their observation skills with simple activities such as maybe a nature walk. Take them on a nature walk near your home or a local park and slow down the pace. Stop to dig in the dirt and turn over a rock. Look for evidence of creature activity, tracks, droppings, nests feathers, webs, holes, cracked acorns, mounds, etc. Get your five senses involved as you're on that walk or as you're in a car or a bus or in a store or even on a playground. You can play the five senses game. This asks the questions, what do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I taste? And what do I feel? Number two, ask questions. Some people get annoyed when kids ask questions, but asking questions is a necessary part of growing. Kids' questions are evidence of their deep curiosity and should be encouraged. Once a baby learns to talk, one of the first questions he will usually ask is, what's that? As they try to identify the different parts of their world. And as they get older, <coughs> they begin to ask why and what will happen if. A great response, especially if their questions are ta taxing your knowledge and patience, is simply to say, let's find out. This, ha this opens the door for a whole new world of input that expands their brain and their knowledge. As adults, we can model asking questions and wondering out loud. This invites children to share in our inquiry and help us to find answers. Even our everyday, seemingly mundane questions can be an opportunity to engage our kids in discovery and problem solving. Here are a few questions that you could explore with your little one. A. I wonder what the weather is going to be like today. Then you can walk outside and look at the sky and then take a look at the hourly pictures of your weather app. This can lead to an unexpected conversation about the, the phrase heat index which she saw on the screen. B. How am I going to reach that paper that fell behind the cabinet? When reaching didn't work, you could put double stick tape on a chopstick and snag that unruly paper, thus modeling how to invent a solution. C. 
What kind of snake we just saw slither behind that bush? We could then compare our memories of size and markings and then visit an online identification site. It was just a harmless garter snake. D. What can I make with these five ingredients in the fridge? Through brainstorming, you could come up with a sausage, carrot, and broccoli omelet topped with a dollop of sour cream. That could make a pretty good lunch. Number three, help your child explore cause and effect. Science isn't as much about success and failure as it is about cause and effect. When I do this, what will happen? Every effect or result can teach us something, even if it's not the result that we expected. And you don't need science equipment to explore cause and effect. You, could ju you just need to ask the right question. For example, what will happen if and then you can finish the sentence what will happen if i change the angle of the car ramp what will happen if i add more eggs to the pancake batter what will happen if i build a sand castle closer to the waves what will happen if i plant one seed in the sun and one in the shade or what will happen if I add a paper clip to the nose of this paper airplane? Number four, before getting to the experimenting, teach your child to predict. Making a prediction as to what might happen. This in itself is a form of brainstorming that will allow your child to explore different scenarios. Will the paperclip make the airplane fly further or will it take a nosedive? Will the ramp increase the speed of the cars? Which seed really will spout first, the one in the sun or the one in the dark? Number five, experimenting. Experimenting is the most rewarding part of the process. Your child can have loads of fun as they try different heights of the car ramp. You could teach them to change only one factor at a time. Let him play with his matchbox car on the ramp for a while or build several sandcastles at different distances from the water. Number six, record the, find the findings. Scientists always take notes. They record their data about their questions, their observations, and the results of their experiments and observations. Turn a spiral notebook into a science journal, a dedicated space for children to record their observations. Younger kids can start by simply drawing pictures, as they get older, they could add labels and written observations. Their science investigation notebook can be used to record questions. That is, kids can keep a curiosity list of questions that they have and topics they want to explore. Or it can be used to record numbers. How high was the tallest block tower that they made? or how many ants were eating that marshmallow on the sidewalk? How many seconds did it take for the car to go down the ramp? How high did the bean seed grow this week? They can use it to sketch, take the journal outside and sketch a leaf, a bug, a rock, a web, a nest, or even a phase of the moon. It can be used to reflect on investigations. What did they try? What did they think would happen? And what actually happened? The bonus strategy is to learn from failure. Failure is an important step in the inquiry process. What happens when the experiment does not give the conclusion that you expected? 
they then have two choices. First, they could give up and say it's a waste of time and effort. Or secondly, they could develop a whole new conclusion and start at the beginning again. This is where the adult can encourage the child to keep trying. Scientific thinking is a series of trials and errors that increases learning at every step of the way. And using trial and error is an important life lesson that could bring huge grain gains throughout your child's life. One word of caution is to let your child see your excitement and interest in their ideas. And if they're noisy and messy and they investigate and experiment, remember the wise words from Mr. Rogers. For children, play is serious learning. Play is really the work of childhood. So there you have it, several ways to make your child into a scientist. If this video has helped you, please leave me a comment at the bottom of the screen. Also, if you have a story, a tip, a strategy, a question, or just some advice that you would like me to share with my audiences, please also leave me a comment at the bottom of the screen. Click on these videos above for more awesome information on education and parenting. As always, thank you for visiting with us at RuthStraightTalk.com. It is certainly a pleasure to share with you. So until next time, happy learning and goodbye.